Please be seated. Jesus says, unless you repent, you will all perish. Now, if you take some time to reflect on this passage, this is a stark statement. And so it might lead you to ask yourself, will we perish as a result of our own demise, of our own self-inflicted punishment, or will we perish by the hand of God? Do we believe in a God who punishes us or cuts us off when we sin? Now, the institutional church often has used passages such as these, or especially passages from the Old Testament, to have us believe that we can be scared into good behavior, including attending church. But does the God that we believe in, does that God keep score of our sins and then use our behavior to either reward or punish us. To me, that sounds more like something we would say about Santa Claus than God. God does not watch our naughty or nice behavior and then come up with a scorecard that can be for us or cut us off at the knees. If you look at particular passages of Scripture, you can come to believe that we believe in a vengeful God, a God that does indeed keep score and hold vengeance against us. But if you look at whole scripture, all of the entirety of scripture, and you think of it as a narrative about God's relationship with God's people, then you come to understand the abundance of God's mercy and the steadfastness of God's love. Because the God we believe in has an unconditional love for his children. A love that includes mercy and forgiveness when we make mistakes and fall short. And a God that longs to redeem us and give us new life when we repent and turn back to the Lord. As Eric preached last week, God forgives our sins and is ready to move forward with us rather than making a judgment call on our lives based on the sum of our sins during our mortal life. Now, we do not get to escape the consequences of our sin when we're forgiven. No, sadly, but realistically, those consequences remain. If you take a good, hard look at the continual cycle in Scripture, then you will see that it is a beautiful story, It's a story of redemption, but it's a story of repentance. God creates, and God loves what God has created. And then we mess up, and we disobey. And the consequences of those mistakes play themselves out through time. But God forgives, and God calls us to repent. And then God redeems and makes us whole. And God sets us back on the path that God desires for us to walk on. And we recommit ourselves to God and to love one another. When we sin, we place obstacles between us and our relationship with God. And God grieves that separation. God longs to cleanse our hearts and to restore our trust fully in God. But with the pain and death we see in the world on a daily basis, it is tempting to convince ourselves that God must not love us or he would stop all the bad things from happening or that maybe God is even punishing us for the sins of the world. And if we lose sight of the presence of God in our midst at all times and in all places, it's easy to let the hurt of the world paralyze us with fear, and fear stagnates us. Fear stops our growth as imitators of Christ. Fear causes us to cease living out the promises we made at our baptism. And fear stops us from bearing any kind of good fruit that would nourish and nurture anybody else, 
much less ourselves. So what is the source of this fear that we see all around us and maybe even inside of us? Is it a fear that maybe the consumerism that we see everywhere in the world has led us to believe that no matter what we have, it's not going to be enough? Or maybe it's fear of death, fear of being alone. Maybe it's fear of change. Maybe it's fear that if we trust God to make us vulnerable enough to learn how to love one another, then surely we will be betrayed or hurt or abandoned. Maybe it's fear of people who seem very different from us. Maybe it's a fear of different faiths. Fear is a reality, but if it paralyzes us in our relationship with God, it becomes life-threatening. When fear consumes us, trust is replaced with doubt. Patience is replaced with the demand of immediate gratification. Generosity is replaced with greed. Reconciliation is replaced with division. Love is replaced with jealousy. Forgiveness is replaced with bitterness. And hope is replaced with fear itself. A fear that consumes us until we become barren of any good fruit. God grieves our fear. And God grieves the hurt that we inflict on one another when we hurt one another out of that fear. Just as God grieves when inexplicable things happen to good people. God longs to replace our fear with trust and hope and a deep faith so that in the midst of pain and darkness, we come to rely on God's power and God's grace to heal. So what causes your work or my work to stop for the good of the kingdom? What leads us to cease to bear good fruit? The season of Lent, the journey to the cross, is a time to reflect on the barrenness in our lives and leave it at the foot of the cross on Good Friday. Because God promises to take that brokenness and that hurt and that regret and that sin and that barrenness and turn it into hope and renewal and restoration and eternal life at the empty tomb on Easter morning. Paralyzing fear leaves us in the darkness of